The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to hear today is our Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of end times, last judgment Sunday. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 1 and 2, the beginning of that reading. Early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. My dear friends in Christ, Jeremiah is one of the four major prophets in the Old Testament, and really they're called major prophets because they have the longer prophetic books in the Old Testament. Well, Jeremiah, one of them, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, the other three of the major prophets. Jeremiah was someone who lived in the southern kingdom of Judah. He lived just north of Jerusalem, and, and he served the people of Judah for 42 years, faithfully served those people for 42 years. When he began his ministry, the good king Josiah was the king over Judah, and he did work out some reforms in the land, but after Josiah, then the next four kings that served when Jeremiah was around, they were all evil kings who led the people astray. And because of that, when you get right down to it, the majority of Jeremiah's message to the people was a call to repentance. He preached the law to them in all its sternness because that's what they needed. That's what the people needed. He prophesied to the people that the Babylonian armies would come on in and de destroy Jerusalem and, and, and God's temple and that the people would be carried off into a Babylonian captivity. He said, listen, the report is coming. A great commotion from the land of the north, that's the Babylonians, it will make the towns of Judah desolate, a haunt of jackals. He had a harsh message, but he did also have beautiful messianic prophecies to share with the people. He did predict, prophesy the return from that Babylonian exile. Jeremiah deeply loved his people. And he regularly brought to the th Lord's throne of grace and mercy his heartfelt pleas for the people, for God to be gracious and merciful to them, to give them his help and blessings. But Jeremiah loved his people, and that meant that, that he'd also proclaim to them the tough stuff, what they needed to hear about their sin and their rebellion against God. And because of that, for the most part, he received negative, negative response to his ministry. He was persecuted by many. He was mistreated by government officials. He was called a liar and a deceiver by the false prophets in the land. But there was also a positive response to his ministry because what God did is God used him to preserve a remnant, a small group of people in Israel that was called the true Israelites, according to scripture. Well, our reading says, early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Jehoiakim was the second evil son of Josiah who ruled in Judah. Scripture says of him that he did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. He practiced and promoted idolatry in the land. He shed innocent blood. 
And now here Jeremiah was receiving a command from God that he was to go and to speak to the king and to the people of Judah. And because this was at the beginning of Jehoiakim's reign, it was an excellent time for Jeremiah to speak to them, to let them know that the Lord meant business, that they shouldn't play around with his patience and graciousness. Well, it would be an opportunity when Jehoiakim heard this message to heed the Lord's message and to get his act together if, if only that were the case. Our reading says, this is what the Lord says. Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. God was saying to Jeremiah, you have a duty to declare the whole truth of God. And Jesus reiterated that command, well, to his disciples and to us right before his ascension into heaven when he gave the Great Commission, when he said, go and make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Well, Jeremiah the disciples and we today have a duty to declare the whole truth of God, to proclaim both law and gospel. There would be a threat and a promise. What Judah needed is Judah needed someone to declare to them the whole truth of God. And today we'd have to say that our nation needs that. Our nation needs God's people to proclaim to it the whole truth of God, law and gospel. But as I say, our nation needs that. Let's never say, yeah, those other people out there need someone to proclaim to them the whole truth of God. We also need someone to declare to us the whole truth of God. You see, you and I, we're sinners, just like the people of Jeremiah's day, just like the Jews. We're sinners, just like our nation, all of the people in our nation and in our world. We're all sinners. We're all sinners, and we need someone like Jeremiah who sees it as his duty to declare to us the whole truth of God. We need to see our sin. That's a tough message, but we need to see our sin. But we are so blessed. We are so blessed when we know our sin to also know about Jesus our Savior, to know that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for those who, like Jeremiah, see it as their duty to declare to us the whole truth of God. It is tough for us to see our sin and what we deserve, eternal punishment, because of our sin. But it's such a blessing to then also see our Savior to know his life and his death and his resurrection, that that's for us so that we can be with him forever in heaven. Thank you for giving us the whole truth of God, law and especially gospel. We pray in your name, dear Jesus, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.